I don't know, $700 worth of items on this void. <laughs> Pretty tasty. Just what oh. I have been waiting for. for battle. Just, just typing in some cheats, just, huh? I see. I'm just hacking in, making sure I can, uh, you know, gather all of the data of the players. Sell it on to Dota Buff or some other website, you know? Y'all up top. Stout Shield and Orb of Venom on this Treant Protector. Nikwa and Boogie leading the charge. Drow Ranger left alone down bottom. Nefrit, you know, they did this in the previous game. Gather Bounty Runes, then come back and play. While Wish mid on the DK still has an Obs Ward. Invoker scouting for it. He's looking for where the vision... Uh, uh, what, what's he doing? He's, he's, not, he's not hunting for vision like we normally do. He's just standing on high ground. Just having too much fun. <laughs> Are you all right there, Samael? He's fine. Wrap around onto Yawar. Faceless Void going to get punched. One hit in from the Treant. Time Walker already forced. Yawar bullied away from the bounty runes. But down bottom... Oh, I say but down bottom... They've actually got the control up. Quincy crew. Yeah, Quincy crew. Four people, bottom, just to secure the runes. No Alk in this game, but still putting a lot of credence into picking up those bounties. Just when I Absolutely, like no contest whatsoever. No, no one's, no one's fighting. Yawa gets himself safely to the tier one. Now, do they, do they keep this tri lane top? Disruptor can't stay here, surely. Nah, he's gonna need to be at the bottom. You can't leave Draw Ranger alone. Oh, it's, it's Treant coming down here. Treant comes down. Sableite's blocking up, so Ogre and Grimstroke, your duo down bot, as we expected. Nefrit trying to block out the wave. Dodges the stroke of fate, nicely played. We'll be able to hold it just outside of tower range. That's a perfect little block on block action going on. A mid lane, Sumail looks like he got. A pretty decent block mid, but it does mean that Wish will be able to drag his wave back towards that tier one. That's a lot of harassment and the slow on the bottom lane from Treant Protector, Orb of Venom, and uh, Frost Arrows level one on Drow Ranger. Wish getting harassed a lot on this mid lane. Uh, I, I like that from Sumail. So many players nowadays, they're, they're, they're you know, afraid to cast spells in case they need it later on. But when you're level one, level two, use your mana pool. Your mana pool is a resource to be expended. Throw a couple of spells, secure a range creep, stop your opponents from getting a range creep. One way or the other, use your mana. Cast your spells. Tornado is 150 mana, so you, I mean, you're pretty limited on your mana early on, but uh, here's a second one. Secure the range creeps. I mean, it's good if you can get the range one. He's not gonna be using it really in the next, you know, two or three minutes anyway. I don't think any ganks are gonna be coming his way. These 2 on 2 lane setups are pretty locked in place. And with an Inkswell forward, y'all in trouble. First blood spilled. MSS grabs it thanks to this tanky ogre frontlining for him. That was more like YOLO. I'm going in. He makes him pay. So how's the top lane going for Wind and Rain? Is this, is this all right for you? So far, 9 Stalker, 9 CS on, uh, on the top of the net worth. So not not too bad. They also have uh, an overtime damage right now. It's a daytime, so they don't want to be too aggressive. Once they hit the five-minute mark, they're going to fight for the bounties, and the boogie will need to be aggressive between fifth and ten-minute mark. This is where you put the pressure. Sumel with his Bassi. Is he going to tornado this creep again? He knows he can't, like, he can't right-click CS the creep. Or can he now? Yes, okay, he can. He, he can. Wish didn't go for the deny. It's been difficult for him so far, Sumail. But holding onto his mana for now. Down towards bot. MSS, Inkswell onto the Ogre. Tries to get as much damage into Nefrid as he can, but he misses the stroke of fate, and Yol has cleared him up. A pull across into the large camp here. Yeah, come here, big up. boy. I mean, Ogre is extremely tanky, but uh, so is Treant Protector. In terms of uh, HP and the damage, his armor is nowhere as close as Ogre's. Seven armor difference. <laughs> like, eight armor Ogre is pretty intense to try and deal with. Sumail, 16-2. Farm trading with a DK. No surprises there. No kill threat, really, in that lane, as I should... Yeah, I should have been looking bot. What, Treant dies under a sentry. That's why. Gets found out. I was going to go and look top, because I thought that was where the action was happening. 
Oh, I love it. The bottom lane, they use the glyph, so Quincy Crew can't pull to the side lane. There was a full creep wave approaching. Nicely done. And there's the tip. Yo. He's got his boots now. Boots over Venom. Could lead to a few more kills as he tries to lurk into the zone, but Dire Sentry still spotting him out and his advance forward. Pretty pretty slow but smooth game here so far. Yawa probably the only hero on the map that's feeling you know, he's not where he should be. But with a nice little go onto Boogie here, if they're able to get another bash, potentially another ice path, they can't follow through on it though. And while on the bottom lane with the action. Oh, yes, Treant almost gets away. No points in Liquid Fire for SVG. 2-1-0 over on the Jakiro. Valuing that Ice Path over the Liquid Fire, at least for now. You should definitely have one point. Just for the extra harassment, it doesn't cost any mana. Sumail, Sumail is still keeping tabs on his farm. Like. He has more CS than Dragonite. That should not happen. Yeah, the, the initial, you know, tornadoes to secure range creeps, that was definitely working out. The Bassy's helping him spam out spells. Bounty Rune's top, though. SVG is here. He grabs one, but he's going to fall for it. The Thunder Strike, the punches from Boogie, and now the chase onto Yawa. Not going to follow through. Let the Void go grab the secondary rune. And bottom, what did we have down there? MSS takes one, and Yol took the other. That's what it was. Once Dragonite gets to level 6, they should try to make a rotation on a mid lane, get a kill on Sumail. Ideally, it's the Night Stalker, but it's easy to see that he's missing from a lane, so... And he's making a play on Yawa. Or well, maybe not. Boogie's still level 4, doesn't have the point in the silence, so he's just going to allow Yawa to slip away. And Yol, not going to let MSS slip away, goes in with a Leech Seed, a little punch forward. Saber Light looking to save his mate. Yol has Invis in two, but the dust comes through. Fire Blast into Inkswell. MSS has a Mango and a Stroke of Fate if he wants to pop it out. There we go. Damage added into the mix. Invis and the dust wears off, and Yol's safe and sound until the sentry comes out, and now Yol is found. Tree and Protector not having a good time this game. Meanwhile, they need, they need to make something happen on this top lane. Night Stalker is level four during the night time. All right, here comes TP. Ogre comes in. SVG still alive. This ice path causing problems for Wind and Rain. Yawa looking for Niqua, but that kinetic field holds them back and a TP out. No There's bad. no bash from Yawa. Disrupt a home. So this means that Draw Ranger on the bottom lane will get... Oh, mid lane, Sumail surviving. The Orb of Venom might take him down. The tree and giving chase, but the Quas regen is enough. Looks like Dragonite's fine. MSS didn't... Get the chance to kill him off, but the final leech seed from Yol. He gets the takedown on Sumail. Trades his life for it, but well worth it. Definitely worth it. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Draw Ranger is uh, having a decent time because everyone just left the lane. And Dragonite now feeling the pain. Saberlight, MSS, and SVG, three man strong surrounding and that DK. Who is now slipping a little bit behind the Sumail Invoker. Phase boots up on him now. 3-3 three, three in the Quas and the Wex. I want to see where he heads now. Usually it's the Urn. But I feel like Sumail's the kind of player that goes, screw Urn, I'm going Hand of Midas into Ags, and I'm going to transition into damage because we have a Void with Chrono. He's going to get to damage eventually. So having an Urn gives you that extra kill potential, extra region. And if he wants to upgrade it to Spirit Vessel, great against the Dragon Knights. Uh, Dragon Blood, Trin Protector, also has uh, Living Armor, one point in it. Uh, hype it up, Gary. SVG is dying! He's dying! He's dead! And he's gone. Nice yeah, little right, now, from Boogie. right now, Boogie is uh, having an extremely good time. We'll put uh, the pressure onto the tower. You can see the rotation coming out from Draw Ranger as well. Also has precision or if she wants to use it. And they switch the lanes around. Yawa now down bottom. Makes a jump onto Yol. Sablelight doesn't have any reveal. They just force the Treant away from fully defending that tier one. 
But equally on the other side of the map, tier one top being pressured heavily by this level seven drow with triple wraith band plus treads. Oh, hello. They actually kill off Yol. How did that, what happened there? Did he get dusted up? Must he did. MSS with a reveal. Tier one top already falling though. And this means that wind and rain, they can mount a defense bottom. They're shifting heroes down. The first one to make the move is Boogie. Nice stalker. Now look at this range creep. Bit to the bottom. Scouting out the TPs. Clever boy. Inks well towards Night Stalker with the Phantoms Embrace Silence. Boogie, he's having difficulty sprinting away. And with a bash into multicast, Whoa. he ulted and got obliterated. Sableye and Yawa pairing up with the RNG gods. Yol and Nikwa trying to give chase onto the Ogre. They do get the kill. The 3x streak grabbed up by Disruptor. Sadly, Faces Void did not have uh, one extra creep there, experience to get uh, himself to level 6. Otherwise, that would be a dead uh, Disruptor. Yol. Again, silenced up. Tries to punch the Phantom's Embrace, but with the Inkswell there, the only thing he'll embrace is death itself. That's a bit too many deaths. On Triumph, yeah. Yeah, six deaths, ten minutes in. It's getting a bit scary. He's going full y'all. Full y'all. Boogie. They've got vision here. SVG wants the bounty rune and he'll grab it. Down south. Sableite. Multicast his Quelling Blade. <laughs> Takes out the Observer Ward. And Sumail chased back behind his Tier 1 as Wish. That Elder Dragon form hasn't had much use. He's popping it, but not getting too much damage onto the Tier 1. Multicasting Quelling Blade could be a good trick against uh, Timbersaw or Triant, but it doesn't work. Like it just says, Multicast, it doesn't cut down two trees. Radiant's bottom tower. Multicast is a funny thing. Imagine if you accidentally... I guess you can't accidentally multicast Observer Wards. <laughs> Just accidentally put down two obs. They're mounting a defense mid, though. Wind and Rain... Uh, sorry, Quincy crew, even, as they do Tornado EMP Nequa down to about a third of his HP. But Static Storm on Invoker drops him to half, and SVG's died in the back, but a nice chrono. Yawa is there on top of two. With a kill on Nequa, they focus on to the soul-bound up Treant, but Yawa, he's got seven sticker, treads to swap back, and Wish can't quite find the kill. The lead seed is ticking oh, him down, but it's tickling him, away. and he jumps back out in the uh, other side of the fight. Nefrit is being soloed out by Sableye's Ogre. One more stun. Oh, he's gusted, silenced, and pushed back into death. Silence just got off cooldown, and uh, I, I think Faces Void should have uh, died there. They were stacking stuns from Dragonite and uh, Overgrowth. Still a decent fight for Wind and Rain. Yeah, absolutely. You have 5k net worth on your Drow, the DK and the Night Stalker, even though the leaning stage, we were thinking, hey, the CS doesn't look amazing. Quincy Crew are starting to pick things up, but they are top of the net worth. Void Invoker Ogre. Maybe maybe struggling is, is the right word. They are starting to fall behind. They are lagging behind for sure. Yeah, they are having some uh, connection problems with the lag. Ogre building toward that uh, Hand of Midas. It's definitely one of the best items you can get an Ogre. Yeah, get that money flowing in. And we saw KP the other day, right? Go Midas into Crimson into Solar. You become an unkillable tank, but you also add in the extra value of those stat and aura items for someone like a Faceless Void who does need building up. Make a move onto Saberlight's Ogre. That's a lot of damage from the Void during this nighttime now. Boogie pops his ulti. Silence there to stop any attempt at a fire blast, and what's done is done. Dark Ascension. What That's a cool name for a spell. Edgy name. You think so? Dark Ascension, 666, Croatia, or... Wait, 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 the last part, what's that? Well, you didn't have those? Like Cr adding uh, the country? Oh, right, yeah, sure, like .hr or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. What was, what, what, what was your first gamer name, gamer tag? I think it was this one. Just Lacoste, ever since yeah. you were like 12 years old? Yeah. Damn, dude. That's kind of embarrassing, to be honest. No, that, I mean, that's a good, it's a good name. It's better than any of my old names. 
I, I bet half of those we can't even say on the stream. Half of them you cannot say on stream. <laughs> For my own ego's sake. Never mind anything else. Wish. Stands his ground. He's just like, whatever. I'm going to get hit by the EMP. Take it from me. Have my mana. I don't care. They see the Triumph, though. They're TPing in SVG. Yawa wants to get involved. Nice little... Ice pass, stroke of fate, but the dust is required. Macro pyre to burn the trees. Not the trees. Maybe they don't have to cast, multicast the quelling blades, but the uh, macro pyre will do the trick. They're smoking up top now. Do they have Chrono ready? They do indeed. No macro pyre to dump inside of it, but a soul bind and a fire blast ready. They can pick off a number of heroes if they're able to catch the drow that is Really the ideal situation, but it's going to have to be Boogie. Night Stalker, chronoed up. Inkswell is there for the extra bit of damage. This shouldn't be a problem. No TPs coming in from Wind and Rain. Give the kill over to Yawar. And a tier one to be claimed as well. So now, Wind I, I thought Wind and Rain would maybe, you know, move out, push mid lane, push bottom lane, go into their jungle, but they're coming to match the pace of Quincy Crew. They've got the numbers Double top. Sentry. The oh, static storm's good. Big. It's perfect. The connect field onto two. Invoker's caught. Ogre's stuck inside. The overgrowth is onto five, and this is Quincy Crew getting burnt alive. Yawa jumps away with the time walk, and MSS sprinting out. Nico glimpses him back as well. SVG trying to dip back out of danger, and Ice Path may be oh, required to save up the Mar void. Gone. But he's gone. The Wish blink in with a Dragon Tail finds a bonus kill. The Void, the Invoker, the Ogre, the three cores gone. The fourth will follow the Jakiro. Position five dead. Night Stalker deep in bottom to pick up a bounty rune and will get a kill. Five on man white. MSS. They're all dead. Quincy Crew blown off the face of the map. We were wondering what this weird amalgamation of Radiant Heroes was, and there it is. They just ran up hell. They had a vision of the shrine, but they did not expect them to take a fight uh, during the daytime, even though Night Stalker was missing. Sumail will save Saberlight for now. Maybe get a kill on the Treant on the way through as Yol will drop to his knees. But yeah, they use Chrono Solo on the Night Stalker and then they stick around. I thought they were they were fine to go for the Tier 1 tower. Static Storm onto two heroes, though. So potent. They should keep fighting on side of Wind and Rain. It's night time for the next four minutes. Dragonite has his mobility item so he can catch up uh, with the Faceless Void. The Glimpse is maxed out. Uh, this boogie guy, this night nice stalker man, a thousand gold away from Aghanim Scepter. He's going to have it at like 20 minutes. Uh, faster. 20 minutes faster than usual? Yeah. 40 minutes faster than usual. And what, what did we see? We saw Gabby get like an 18 minute, 17, 17 minute Ags. Was it faster than that? Uh, it's not faster than that because he was playing uh, the safe lane. I think he had 20 minutes. Uh, BKB ag ag. BKB, yeah. yeah. Bottom right. lane, Gary. Oh, is it Boogie? He's fine, dude. He's, he's a night stalker. Not a care in the world. He walks back in, but there's the soul bind. Double tornado, triple, in fact. The DK on the far left does get caught. Quincy Crew playing the right-hand side of this lane. Boogie is trying to slide in behind again. Gets another void onto Sumail. Do we have a silence? We do in three seconds. Yol, what is that? Like his 11th death? 10th death in a row. Faceless Void, silence. Where's the glimpse? shakiro has gone. EMP will just about clip the DK. Boogie is found. Yawa with a bash and the Ignite there, the Chrono. Two of them caught, but the damage is lacking. The follow through not coming. Nefrit, Hurricane, Pike away. And Void, he's going to have to jump back. Saberlight needs to sprint away, but the Thunder Strike is there. Nikwa just keeps his vision going and the jump in from the DK. They're onto the Grimstroke. The Sumail, oh, Patience Static from Storm Niqua. is beautiful. Gorgeous ulti from Nikwa. Wish will not survive, but it is absolute perfection from this Disruptor. Worst hero? No, no tail. Nikwa is the best. I can't believe that he was actually holding on to that ulti for so long. Didn't want to pop it and then shows up. Just counters Faceless Void completely. He needs that BKB desperately. Is it coming? It is. Saved up 900. Still a long way to go. Boogie now, 600 off the Ags. Moves up top. Get a bit of free farm going for himself. The thing is, if this game drags, uh, 
BKBs will come online for Wind and Rain. Drow Ranger is building into one. Same goes for Dragon Knight. Uh, Night Stalker will get one eventually. They don't have any abilities that go through BKB. Like, you're relying on your Faceless Void to deal physical damage and uh, potential Sunstrike, which is only one point in Exort, so not that effective. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And now, Wind and Rain smoke up. Boogie has his Ags finished, coming out on Courier. Top lane is going to be controlled up as well as Dire Jungle. Equally smoked up are Quincy Crew. Heading down to connect with the Void. Chrono in 35 seconds. The mirror movement on the map. Splitting the map horizontally pretty much. Radiant side plays up to the top part. Dire plays down to the bottom as we usually see. Come and ward down into these areas where you can spot the movements of your opponents into the jungle. Natural, natural stuff. Now this. The clash coming from opposite sides of the river is a little more interesting. Saberlight gives away his position, walks into the creep wave. MSS shows with a stroke of fate, but here comes Boogie. A nice stalker, Dark Ascension flapping his wings over the hills, far away, gives the vision for the glimpse. So they drag Saberlight back into the field and into his grave. Man, this disruptor is doing so much work. Uh, you know, when the hero is not picked, sometimes you don't know how to play against him because uh, it was kind of forgotten. Yeah, that whole, you know, experience and feel thing. We were talking about it on panel earlier on. Just the uh, the feel of the game completely changes. The dynamic that Glimpse brings, that Static Storm and Kinetic Field bring. Right. I mean, the, like, Disruptor was popular when Force Staff, like it was Force Staff season. Disruptor was popular back then. Now Force Staff isn't really an item. Disruptor comes back and people realize, hang on a second. Yeah, now it's a winter season, so we're not uh, into Force Staff season yet. Yeah, we're more into uh, hoods and pipes. Keep ourselves warm. That's a good one, Gary. Gotcha. I knew where you were going with that. <laughs> Even if you didn't. Sometimes I just uh, let it hang and uh, get my caster get the most out of it. Or let your co-caster get flustered over it. I think I'm the co, you're just the caster. Oh no, you're the lead caster for sure, Lacoste. You've cast a TI, man. You're, you're the lead caster nah, nah, now. I'm just the co. Okie dokie. This train protector is giving them trouble. I mean, he shouldn't be having this many deaths at this point. It's 10, but still he's doing his work. Like He's scouting things, uh, forcing rotations. Uh, the supports are buying dusts and sentries for him. And he has this global presence. He does get scouted, silenced, and caught up in the ice path. Yeah, I'm no expert, but uh, 11 deaths is a bit too much. Let's see what the rest of his team can do with the information he's given them. Scouting, yes, it's great and all, but dying and not being able to fight around the scouting and the vision you're giving is quite another. Wish has Blink BKB now. Nefriot has BKB Pike with Aegis, of course, for another few minutes. Quincy Crew getting the best out of the last 30 seconds though. Top lane Void is free farming. Ogre is back in the jungle using his hand of Midas and multicasting it on the potato tomato camp. I do have concerns about Sumail though. Spirit Vessel into Yules. No, tra no transitional Midas, no Aghanim Scepter, no, no Force Staff, no BKB. This Yule Scepter, it, it is, you know, an item which potentially can save him from Night Stalker and Disruptor, but it also could be his undoing. Yeah, it also removes the silence from the Draw Ranger, not the one from the Night Stalker. Also by some time if he's caught into Static Storm. But uh, they are approaching. Like they still have this Aegis up and running for two and a half minutes. Okay, DK with Draw Aura is pretty damn powerful, Lacoste. He's whacking away. Look at the watch this tier three. Watch it melt. Watch it get absolutely That's a big annihilated. Tower. Yeah, it's a, it's a big bloodlusted beefy boy, but even even so, this glyph is not bothering Wish one inch. He's got dragon blood, he's got BKB, and he's taken the tower down to about 60% HP. Multicast not coming from Saberlight on the fire blast. A quick cold snap for an even quicker full staff back by the drought. It's time to fall back because Yawar has a 10 second BKB and the they will gladly take this fight. Quincy Crew coming out of their base. Like you're saying, emboldened by the fact Yoar is ready. Oh, they saw him. He's pinging it out. Wish looking for the vision. He sees the void again. A dragon form yep. running. Running out, so... I don't think 
they want to take a fight right now. Also, it's uh, a minute and a half until the next night time. So just wait for Dragonite ulti to be up and uh, then try to force a team fight. They can see Yol. again. <laughs> Yol scouts him out and Yol finds that five heroes are a few more than he can handle. And there we have Invoker skipping out the level 10 talent, going straight into 15. A cold snap cooldown. Yeah, level 10 talents are really bad for 40 chaos meteor damage. You're not even having but an Exhort Invoker, so... Exactly. But it's Ghost Talk, I, I mean, you benefit way more from putting an extra point in uh, Quas or Wex at this point. Exactly. And then you can come back for the Meteor Talent when you've got more Exhort. <laughs> Quincy Crew. Even though they have this BKB Void, what, what, what's the reason they're not going out and, you know, smoking, looking for a fight, trying to force They might thing? smoke when uh, Aegis is about to expire. So in 40 seconds, try to use a smoke, catch, draw Ranger off guard and uh, kill her. So, but you need to have a perfect timing for that. Well, DK will show himself on the tier one. Three heroes smoked behind him. Drow Ranger's gonna come in, but the blink and the stun. Catching Invoker, Static Storm Big onto static the three storm. of them, but the BKB avoid and the Chrono turn. Already losing some mail, but no buyback though, and this is Quincy Crew bleeding out. They've got a nice, nice tree into the back lines. You already used Overgrowth, but Drow Ranger shredding through them all. Yawar has to jump back to the high ground. They didn't get a single kill, Lacoste, and they're gonna lose three heroes, maybe even four. SVG falls, glimpse back onto Yawar. He's already used Time Walk, but they don't have the blink stun from Wish just yet. Four heroes down, and Rax might be falling. Sumail didn't get a spell off in that fight. They had a good initiation from Night Stalker and the Dragonite. A lot of silences. You have this tanky core who runs in, doesn't care too much, has uh, living armor sitting on him, and uh, yeah, Drow Ranger just pops the aura. Drow didn't even use the BKB in the previous fight. Yeah, didn't need to. Genuinely didn't need to. Nefrit, perfectly fine. Taking down two lanes of barracks. No, just going to go for the one. Everyone respawning on Quincy crew. So they take down the one melee, not even a full lane. Still, 26 minutes in. Nice signal of intent there from Wind and Rain, as they know that this night time, another four minutes of it is going to give them another beautiful window here to continue fighting. So four bounty runes, uh, a tier three tower, and uh, melee raxes. They still want to take a fight. Dragonite about to have his ulti ready in uh, 20 seconds. Also, freshly bought Heaven's Halberd, which will triple face this void. BKB from Wish is going to cancel out everything that Quincy Crew tried to throw his way. He'll find the Ogre, Static Storm onto Void, but he's got BKB, so he'll fall back and away. Other side of the fight, we've got Sumail finally casting spells. The Invoker is going to work. Saberlight's dropped, so is Boogie. A couple of beautiful pickoffs. And Saberlight is forced to buy back. Oh no, not yo, again. Yo, yo. Do we have sentries? We don't. Yeah, we've got a sentry there anyway, so it doesn't matter if he gets the invis off or not. Yeah, but his uh, positioning in the previous fight was amazing. He got the four-man overgrowth. Uh, Sitting on uh, 1,500 gold, so I guess he just wants to buy a blink. Has a uh, couple of bracers queued up, but uh, he, he's close to blink dagger. No reason uh, not to buy it. Disruptor working on Aghanim Scepter. Look at him a go. Disruptor is really farmed. 8.6k net worth. Uh, it, it was what we were saying, that this tree, you know, he's kind of a 4, but kind of a 5 when it comes to farm priority. Does it, Disruptor doesn't have a damage talent, right? No, okay. Just making, just making sure. Damage talent. Thunder strike damage. I was thinking right-click damage with the Drow aura. <laughs> who, who do we have? We had like Witch Doctor, Lion, Winter Wyvern with the three. Rubik. Rubik, yeah. yeah. That's a good fourth one. Drow Ranger supports. So we did get the pipe up on the ogre. Four staff queued up next, but even with a hand of Midas, Saberlight seems to have uh, uh, struggled to keep his farm rate going. So has Sumail. Sitting below 10,000, below the Night Stalker. Yeah. He's only 1,000 ahead of uh, Disruptor at one point. At this point, that's pretty nuts. That that is actually pretty nuts. Big smoke in from Wind and Rain. Can they find anyone? Radiant scanned the high ground. They were looking for anyone near the shrine. Arcane runes there for Wish. He's he's already popped his ulti. Interestingly enough. 
If you'd had that Arcane Rune beforehand, would have been absolutely wonderful. And with one minute remaining until Roshan... I think uh, he's just misclicked. Yeah, he must have. There's no reason to pop the ulti. So now we very likely wait for the next Dragon Form to come up. They'll pick off a Shrine, look for that. Easy objective for now. Manta style for Void. Thoughts? Silence? An another it's guaranteed... Uh, uh. Like, you don't want to BKB a Gust, right? So you're going to have Manta for Gust. Manta for one, Silence Manta to get uh, BKB for out of the overgrowth so you can actually attack and use the yeah. Time Walk. Uh, so or two, Night Stalker Silence. Two items to save. Of Manta style also gives you some tankiness, a little bit of damage, and... Uh, a lot of stats. Yeah, I mean, you did mention, right, at the end of the draft, they've got Gust, they've got Overgrowth, another route from Nature's Guys, they've got Static Storm and Crippling Fear. We, we knew the Void was going to have to itemize to deal with it, and this is, this is the direction that Yoar wanted to head. And again, we see the split of the map. Roshan respawning now, though. Should be Wind and Rain who get that information first. Dyer scanning near where they're holding, and they're, they're, they're grouped up like they're going to smoke. Yeah, Quincy Crew want to smoke, but they also need to outpush the lanes a little bit. Uh, top lane still showing. Roche uh, is up. <laughs> Watch them just like smoke like this and come again to meet in the mid lane. <laughs> We're going to have like the yin and yang of smoke movements coming in. Oh, a double damage rune. That is big for Quincy Crew. Put that on the void. Get a couple of bounty runes, now move into position. Roshan is Wait, not being taken. Mana pool is extremely low. I mean, it's 300 to cast the, the Chronosphere Mantis Tower. And he's stunned up. Dragon Tail's there. Can they get the control? They've got the Static Storm, but he BKBs. In we go onto the Drow with the Chrono. That's nicely done by Yawar. Down, Down to the south, the Nice Dog is trying to go to work, but the Drow is still alive. Finally falls to the Void, but they've taken out Sumail in return. Nico is unstoppable as he gets MSS. Forces the buyback, and Yawar is still in there, but he's got no mana left. You called it right, Lacoste. He ran out of mana. He's got a Time Walk left, but he's been silenced up. He's been caught, and he's been... Jo oh, he's jumped away. Still has a DD rune to play around with, but he needs to get... Oh. Uh, it just turned gap. daytime. Where's the glimpse? He has the cast range. Gonna catch him. There we go with the Dragon Tail to follow. Three, four in a row. Draw Ranger hesitated there a little bit whether she wants to buy back or not to see how this fight is gonna develop. And uh, Faces Void used the Chrono just to get her. And uh, now she's gonna pick up the Aegis. Uh, there's also Cheese since it's second Roche. And uh, they can wait a little bit, uh, maybe for the night time. Wait for Dragonite to, to get his Aghanim Scepter up and then group up and go in again. Get that Dragon Form going. MSS brought back as well, but he couldn't get into the fight properly. Oh, nice. DK Aghanims. We love to see that. The Black Dragon Form. Bonus corrosive damage, splash damage, slow, everything increased. More attack range. Yeah, he also went for the GPM talent, so hmm. he will get a lot of items uh, if this game drags. But the thing is about uh, choosing the level 20 talent is whether you want to end the game right now or not. Like, uh, if you think about it, um, how much 25 strength costs. Like, Reaver, you're going to get that uh, gold in, uh, like, uh, 15 minutes. But you can get 25 strength right now, and it's also really good uh, with the precision aura, so you can have more attack speed, which means uh, more damage. More damage, more damage. Wish. Dragon forms up. <laughs> Midas multicast. Come on, Saber, like, clear the wave. Melee creep still up. The dragon goes to work on that tier three. EMP with a multicast fire blast. Quick little dual breath. Apparently, Wish doesn't really give a damn. Void is still bottom lane, showing on wave. Wish finally will retreat from the tier 3 push, but the Glyph has been expended. Glyph now down on the dire side. Dragon There's the Void. There's the Void. Yawa. Chrono's up the DK, but he's stuck on the kinetic field. He BKBs just a little bit too late, and Boogie's got the AoE Sans into the back onto MSS. Sumail got caught in it for a sec as well, but Yawa dead for 70 with no buyback. And Wish keeps on going forward. SVGs, the Jakiro that's fallen. The Soul Bind, well, it will 
connect a couple of them, but the damage is just lacking here from Quincy Crew. Five alive, still up and running for Wind and Rain, and Sumail, well, he's dead again, isn't he? Deafening Blast back, but it's Niqua with Wish clearing through them. A double buyback now from Invoker. Jakiro try to hold on to the last remnants of their base, but the structural damage is intense. Wind and Rain are clearing through these barracks like a hot knife through butter. They didn't even lose uh, Aegis in that fight. Try to focus down the Dragonite, but uh, a bit too tanky to take him down, even in the Chronosphere. You are with no buyback, even if he has a buyback there. You're buying back on Faces Void, who does not have a Chrono ready, and uh, this is gonna be Mega Creep's ranged barracks on bottom. 170 HP left, someone should kill that. Apparently, Nefrit just wants to hit tier fours. 10 seconds for Void to come back up, but I think, again, you've hit the nail on the head without Chrono. What, uh, what, they didn't what even do? know. I mean, <laughs> look at Yol. He's pinging out. Guys, <laughs> there's still range barracks on the bottom. It did, well, that's the thing. Like, I, I thought they took down the full lane earlier on. Maybe they thought the same. Like, we got a full lane, guys, surely. Yol, he gives his life for the tier, uh, for the ranged barracks, but Wish is there with the help of the Static Storm. They will try and force the BKB of Yawar. He's half HP. He's 10% HP. He time walks back and gets a little bit of that regain, but the, dra the dragon's just following him down, forces the BKB now. And with Invoker gone for 90 seconds, this looks like end of the road for Quincy Crew here in this series. GG is called, and Wind and Rain. They tie things up one to one in this best of two. Yeah, we had our doubts about uh, the way they drafted, uh, not uh, your everyday draft, but um, they made it work, and I'm having a guess. Are we back to Draw Ranger meta? Uh, it looks like that might be a 